Good morning, and a very happy new year, even though we're well into March, you know. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've come out in 2022 to make a film, and my walk starts here in the beautiful village of Enza. Specially commissioned by the 6th Duke of Devonshire, the custom-built village of Enza on the Chatsworth Estate features a delightful hodgepodge of traditional house designs, from mock Tudor to Swiss cottage. The Duke decided to demolish the old estate village and rebuild it out of sight in the 19th century, because it spoiled his view of the estate from Chatsworth. The village's former post office is now home to Enza Tea Cottage, licensed and open daily throughout the year, serving breakfast, morning coffee, lunch and afternoon tea, and also some Chatsworth Estate holiday cottages. The graceful spire of the Church of St Peter dominates the village skyline, and many fine monuments to the Cavendish family can be found inside the building. In the churchyard, a special area is reserved for the family's graves. Another beautiful church. And if I stand to stop to listen, I can just hear traffic on the nearby road. But apart from that, there's absolute silence. Lovely. So today is Saturday the 19th of March 2022. And this is the first time this year I've come out to make a film. I have done some walks already this year, but I've just not taken the camera with me. But that's a subject that I might talk more about in a future film. Anyway, I shall now get on with today's walk. Okay, I'm just about to cross the road. I should be following that path around there to something very special indeed. Exiting the village, I crossed the main road and followed the broad path opposite. Well, there we are. That is without a doubt the most impressive feature on today's walk. <laughs> Lying on the banks of the River Derwent, Chatsworth is undeniably the jewel in the crown of the Peak District. Home to the Cavendish family since the 16th century, Chatsworth is deservedly top of the list of attractions for visitors to the Peak District National Park. And there is more than enough to keep the whole family occupied for a full day here. I never fail to be impressed by the sight of Chatsworth House. Pass this place many, many times, never tire of it. The magnificent English country house is set in over 1,000 acres of parkland, 
with over a hundred acres of stunning formal gardens, a farmyard and children's adventure playground, as well as cafes and gift shops. The Three Arch Bridge was created in the 18th century by the architect James Payne. The bridge carries the main drive over the River Derwent up to the house and was carefully angled so as to be seen from the house and orientated in such a way as to provide that last striking view to the house from the entrance drive. <laughs> Crossing back over the bridge, I turned left to follow the riverside path. Just beautiful. As I said earlier, I never tire of seeing Chatsworth House. I remember the first time I saw it, which was during my very first visit to the Peak District way back in 1986. I did a walk which took me through Enza, and I probably did the same route that I did this morning from Enza to Chatsworth. And when I first saw Chatsworth House, I was just absolutely blown away by it. And I still am today. As I say, I drive through this area a lot, and I've been living in the Peak District now for over 19 years, and I still never tire of seeing Chatsworth House. It's just wonderful. Oh well, I'm going to come back to Chatsworth another time and look at some other parts around the house. But for now, I'm just going to be doing a nice pleasant riverside walk beside the Derwent. Well, I've got a lot to talk about. I've got a lot of shout outs to give, but I won't be doing all that today. <laughs> I'll be spreading that all across, well, however many films I make this year. Because to be perfectly honest with you, although I've got plans for this year, I don't know what 2022 is going to bring. So I'll just see how it goes. So anyway, for today, I'd like to talk about Christmas. <laughs> I know we're well into March now, but uh, I just thought, well, as this is the first time I've started filming since Christmas, it'd be a nice opportunity to talk about it. Now for me, Christmas has always been very much a family thing. You know, I mean, I know in sort of more recent years, it's been smaller, because generally it's just been me and mum. But I've always seen mum at Christmas. Now that's whether I've been with a partner or not. I've all seen mum on Christmas day at some point. Um, but uh, I might talk about that in more detail another time, actually. But anyway, the Christmas just gone. I went down to visit mum. Um, I've been doing that now for the past several years, really. Um, and it's always nice, it's just me and her. Of course, Christmas, you know, the Omicron variant was still very much around and people were unsure how contagious it was, so... But luckily it was just me and Mum. We did see some other members of the family when we were down there, when I was down there, which was nice. Um, but the funny thing is, whenever I go and see Mum, she always makes use of my car, which is fine. I mean, I, I'm always happy to help out because mum's never driven. And uh, so when I go down to see mum, <laughs> I always sort of end up taking things to the local tip for her, <laughs> picking up sort of large things which she can't carry. Because when she does her own shopping, when I'm not down there, she usually gets a bus to the supermarket and then has to get a taxi back. But she still can't take, she can't buy large things. I'm talking about things like cat litter. She's got a cat, so she buys big bags of cat litter, so she can't, you know, carry that on, on her own. And also things like compost for her garden. So yeah, when I'm down there, I usually help her out and we go to garden centres. We usually do a big food shops when I'm down there, so I can get all the big things for her, you know, which helps her out a lot when I'm there.
Anyway, back to Christmas just gone. I can't remember if it was Christmas Eve or the day before. The day I went down to Mum's, um, I travelled down to Somerset where she lives. And uh, it was the same day when I did a little bit of shopping for her. She just wanted a couple of things, so I said, well, I can just go to Lidl, which is just down, what, two minutes drive down the road from where she lives. So I said, I'll just pick these things up for her. So I went down to Lidl, and uh, as I was walking around the store, I just happened to notice someone. I thought, is it? Yes, it is. I'm sure it is. I saw this guy. He had a mask on, but he was just paying for his shopping at the, uh, the self-checkouts. And I looked and I said, yeah, that's him. That's definitely him. <laughs> but I couldn't really speak to him because I, I think I was in the queue waiting to pay for my, my stuff. Um, anyway, I went outside and sat in my car and I saw him again. He'd taken his mask off by then and I could see who it was clearly. I was right. And it was Ollie Parry Jones. <laughs> I have mentioned Ollie before. He's got a YouTube channel called Walks with Ollie. And uh, I mentioned him if you ever saw my cameras and accessories film, one of the many behind the scenes films that I made during the first lockdown two years ago. But uh, I came across Ollie back in 2017. So I've been following him for nearly five years now. But when I first came across his channel, it was called Ollie Outdoors. So he's since renamed it Walks with Ollie. Now it was in 2017 when I was spending a lot of time down in the southwest, which is where he comes from. Um, and during my research for some of the films I was making, I came across his YouTube channel and uh, he'd done some walks in an area in which I was about to make a film. So I've been following him since then. So yeah, and it's really weird because uh, seeing him in Liddles, it was just like I felt I'd known him for a long time even though this was the first time I'd seen him in the flesh. So I had to go and say hello to him. As I was sitting in my car, I could see him walking towards his car and he was just about to drive off and I thought, well, if I don't say hello now, I'm gonna miss the opportunity. So I just walked over to his car. I was still wearing my mask, or I put my mask back on, I think. And I knocked on his window <laughs> and uh, I took off my mask and I went, hello. <laughs> He said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, what are you doing here? But no, it's really nice to meet you, Ollie. Of course, Ollie lives in the same town in which my mum lives. I always knew that, but uh, I sort of, I suppose I did expect to bump into him one day. So it was really nice to bump into him this time. I'm just sorry that we couldn't have spoken for longer, really. I was just conscious of the fact that I literally just caught Ollie before he was about to drive off. So I didn't want to hold him up. But uh, yeah, for the little time that we did speak, it was really nice speaking to him. Uh, it's, the funny thing was, what I actually noticed was that he was taller than I imagined. I mean, as I say, watching his films on YouTube, I feel like I know him anyway. I feel like I've known him for years. Well, past five years since I've been following his channel. But when I actually saw him in the flesh for the first time, he was just taller than I expected. I said to him, I said, you're taller than I expected. What are you, six foot? He said six foot one. Uh, so when I said that uh, he was taller than I expected, he did actually say that, uh, you know, a lot of people do say that, he said to me. <laughs> but yeah, again, lovely to meet you, Ollie, and uh, I'm sure I'll bump into you again next time I'm visiting my mum. But uh, hopefully next time, we'll have a bit longer to chat. So. Passing Payne's Mill, the riverside path eventually ended at the One Arch Bridge, also created in the 18th century by James Payne. This coarse, square sandstone and ashlar structure is a feature of the South Park and today carries the B6012 across the Derwent. Okay, the bridge is as far as I'm going down the Derwent today, so I'm going to just slightly retrace my steps. I'm going to bear away from the river, so I'm going to sort of climb above the estate now.
Back over the bridge, I followed a path to cross the road at a cattle grid near the entrance to Carlton Lee's car park and Chatsworth Garden Centre. Continuing along a path uphill, I began to get more elevated views of Chatsworth. Not a bad view, really, is it? So, beyond Chatsworth, to the left, you can see Baslow, Kerber and Frogger's Edges and the village of Baslow below. Lovely. And again, to think this is only a few miles up the road from where I live. One thing I've not seen today is any deer. Chatsworth deer. You normally see them around here somewhere. Quite often when I'm driving along the road there and you can see them quite close by. They don't seem to be bothered by the traffic that travels near them. They're amazing. But they'll be down there somewhere knocking around. I do remember some years ago, I was driving through Chatsworth at night when it was dark. Uh, I can't remember where I'd been, but I was on my way home. I was just driving past Enza actually. And I had to slow down because I was suddenly aware of what appeared to be a load of lights moving across the road in front of me. So I had to stop. And of course I realised it was, it was the deer. <laughs> it was their eyes that was glowing like lights. You couldn't actually see the deer at first. All you could see was their eyes glowing. It was a really bizarre sight. But as I stopped, you know, you could just make them out as they were galloping across the road. That really was an amazing sight. Eventually, I turned left at a gate to climb up through woodland, beyond which I emerged onto fields near the Russian cottage, a holiday home owned by the Chatsworth estate. At a signpost, I bore right to head uphill through Carlton pastures. Passing the pond, I went right at a crossing of paths to head for Ball Cross. After a while, my path emerged onto a lane near Ballcross Farm. Right, so I'm at Ballcross Farm now. Just down there. So, a path down there goes to Bakewell, where those two people are going. But my way is up the lane here. Just up there, and it's a short walk back to Enza. The lane climbed briefly, then it was all downhill. When the lane bore slightly left, I took the path off to the right which gradually dropped back into Enza. Well, what a glorious day it's been. I can't complain at all. I'm not sure that it beat yesterday's record of the warmest day of the year so far, which was what yesterday was apparently, but it's still been glorious today. Can't complain. And I'm now back in Enza. It's been a really nice walk today around Chatsworth. I'll see a little bit more of Chatsworth again on another walk, but uh, it's just been nice doing this section today. And I would say, not a bad start for my first walk that I filmed in 2022. I wonder what this year is gonna bring.
Let's see. 